I'm going to review these test leads from Pomona. These have been sent to me at no cost, so thank you much Pomona for sending them to me. Much appreciated. So we've got two different types of leads here. We've got a Precision Electronic Pro Kit, and we've also got the Deluxe Electronic DMM Test Lead Kit, which is a whole bunch of adapters and all sorts of stuff. Loads of things in here. So I'm going to close look at these. I'm actually going to do things like get out my insulation resistance tester, which I've got in here. And we'll just check the insulation and see if I can actually get it to break down. And I chuck a thousand volts for it, three weapons, that sort of stuff. And then tinker around. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you find reviews interesting. So I'll start with this kit here. Now, they actually sent me two. So I've already opened one up. I'm going to put this one back to one side for now. So this is the model 6341. And I've been using them a little bit on my meter here. Now, no, this isn't a fluke, but you know, we'll get there. So the difference between these leads and standard leads is that these are much finer, like much finer wires, so much more nimble, I suppose. They're like smaller probes, that sort of stuff. So if I get my other Pomona cables here, which Pomona sent me previously, you see these are somewhat smaller. All right, so it means they're less bulky, they're much finer use. So if you're trying to program a circuit, now these are okay for general use, but when you're trying to do like SMD components and stuff like that, you're trying to measure components on the circuit board, just service mount like 0603, stuff like that. These are a bit big for that. You can use them. I mean, the one thing I've got here as well, which is also in this pack here, you can get these adapters. You can plug these into your leads, and it gives you these really fine points. You can see me using these in previous videos. I've been mean, probing around for the circuitry, and these are super sharp. And you can you know, get in there and just probe around, and you can get in there and get into really fine stuff and get to small points and small pins and all that. So that's, but it still ends up being quite bulky. I mean, look how much lead you've got there. To deal with right this actual probe it then becomes quite big compared to these so they've got a place but we'll get to that but these ones are meant for you know obviously more delicate work instead of like mains cables stuff like that you can use this on fine electronics so for example i've got my circuit board here now I can get these probe covers off he's got these covers because these are super sharp and you want to keep them that way you know you can really easily get onto this 0603 resistor like that bang straight on easy all right very easy you know, capacitor there. These are all 0603 parts. Anyway, they're small. I think they're 0603s. It's dead easy, not at all a trouble, no risk of flipping and shorting stuff out. Now these are also a bit special because they've got interchangeable tips. So this pack comes with some other tips as well, which you can actually swap out on these. I haven't tried it myself yet. So you've got some long steel probes, which basically makes it a lot like these things. So it gives you the same sort of effect on long reach probes and get right into something. I think the whole thing's conductive and I don't think there's any sleeving on here at all. I think it's just steel all the way. So you've got those ones. I haven't actually tried swapping these out yet. There you go. So that's obviously the short probe. And then we can get a long probe instead. Something like that. Here we go, that's it. That gives you a long probe instead. Right. But obviously this whole thing is not insulated. Maybe you want to put some sleeving over it if you want to use it that way. And we also have a little like pogo pin versions as well. And these are actually different types. There's a steel pin and these are the pogo pins. And they've got different heads on them. See this one's got like a three prong, is that one? Can't quite tell myself from here. It's really small to see. It's like a three prong pogo pin. So basically what it means is you can actually push on a circuit. It's a spring on it. So you can push down, it'll just hold on. Let's see if you're wobbling around a little bit, or it's moving slightly, maybe it'd be this slightly to, to shift. That's a four, I think. That's a four pin. Maybe it's four, anyway. But they've got different sizes. This, one's a bit, this is like a plain tip, which is also a pogo pin. That's a much finer pronged tip. Another plain tip. And that'd be the other one. So you can see these ones here got the larger prongs on them this is the smaller prongs and these are the just pointy tips let's just get one of these larger ones we'll put that in there so we go now you've got a pogo pin on here so you can actually just do probing like this so you've got your circuit like this so this is the larger pogo pin one as you can see there you can see that so that's actually quite large compared to these chip legs even though this is a small probe but if you've got say something like this like these legs, maybe you can probe onto one of these legs, or I say. So here you go, you get onto that leg, and it just sits on the end of the pin. So that's onto the leg. Well, there's there. 
and you can do that really easily and it doesn't want to slip off see it just sits on there so it's really good for doing leaded components see it's just really easy it doesn't slip so it's really good for that so this is the finer pogo pin version all right the first one was quite a big one this is a small one and this i think if you can get it right that will sit on component legs like ic's like this see fine it doesn't want to slip off once you're on there it doesn't want to come off Obviously you have to be careful about getting it on there properly in the first place and getting it seated down properly but once you do it doesn't want to slip off um, you can probably still use it on these as well of course so or even these kinds of components maybe like that get onto these so it's got quite a sharp individual points which you probably can't really see there and obviously the benefit of these is that you can just unplug and plug them in just as easy as that then you've got yourself a new pogo pin version you know so this is just a plain point. It's probably going to be quite good for these as well. That's a close look. All right, so that can get in there as well. See how it goes. Try and get one on there. So it doesn't want to slip too much. It's pretty good. I mean, you have to try and be careful about getting it bedded in. With. Obviously, I'm trying to focus on the camera and what I'm doing with that. You know, try these parts down here, these capacitors. All right, so again, means you can your bed's in and just gives you just enough there so you can hold pressure on. Same deal, easy. So if you're a bit wobbly around or things are moving around, it's probably good for that. So if you use probes with Progo pins, I've seen these in videos before, but if you use them, please comment down below about what you find them good for. It'd be interesting to see what other people use them for. Um, and obviously this has got the, the plain steel pin, which I'm just going to push back in for now, which you really then you know, push quite hard on and really bed that in if you need to get through something such as um, conformal coating that sort of stuff a lot of stuff I've fixed the older stuff has got conformal coatings on the board to help protect them and obviously these kinds of pins probably won't go through them because you know, they've got the spring tension you're know, trying to overcome the spring tension and the spring tension is probably not enough to actually pierce the conformal coating but if you've got these sharp steel probes then you can just push as hard as you want obviously it's like you would do normally but uh, these are very very sharp so these are excellent and they're really easy to use you know really fine you know they're not at all bulky so you can see here these are 1000 volt rated cat 2 3 amps so they're rated for 3 amps because obviously you've got a much finer cable here and this obviously can't take 10 amps through this kind of wire it's much thinner the standard silicon cables which you get on multimeter leads will be a bit bulky for this i mean these are meant for delicate work so as i've mentioned in my multimeter review videos if you haven't seen those check out the playlist in my channel where I view multiple, multiple videos, including some fluke ones. I've already done one, I've got some more coming. The quality of the probe has a big effect on your continuity testing. All right, so if you've got decent quality probes, continuity is much faster. If you've got a cheaper probe, not so good, you know, the coatings are not so quite as nice on it, that sort of stuff. They'll be a little bit slower to respond, where it takes a bit more pressure to get through the oxidized coating to get a decent response. Now, on my BM786 here, this is actually a fairly fast response meter anyway for continuity. So let's see how this goes. How's that for fast? <laughs> Alright, that's super fast, but a lot of that comes down to the pro quality. Alright, so if I do my usual test, which is a stick on a ground connection of this Arduino Pro Mini here, there's another ground connection over here. So let's run across. Just like that. How fast is that? I think there's something over here which is marginal because it's capacitor, I think. Just over here. Anyway, but yeah, that's how fast that is with those pro tips. That's incredible. So let's do exactly the same test with this Fluke 107 here, which I also recently reviewed. I did get some comments about the continuity being a bit slow on this one. And yeah, it is a bit slower than the Bryman, but this is only an entry-level Fluke. Right? This is like one of the cheapest ones you can get, pretty much. So it's some compromises there. But... With these probes on, it's definitely not as fast as Bryman. This particular model is not as fast anyway. That Bryman is very quick. You know, it's a bit of an unfair comparison in a way. It's not as fast. But there's a bit of a price difference between these two as well, to be honest. I think that Bryman there is about three times the price of this one, something like that. Not exactly fair. It definitely is 
faster with these probes than it was with the original probes that came with the meter. So this is a nice upgrade for this meter. But yeah, it's still not as fast as the other. Right, my next test. I've got this plugged into my installation resistance tester here. Back to check, you're sure I do that. Yeah, that's okay. Let's do straight to 1000 volts. Now, this is going to be 1000 volts between these two probes. What I'm going to do is first obviously make sure it actually works, and then I'm going to basically lay this down on the bench and I'm just going to run along the cable, you know, like this kind of thing, and just see if I can get any leakage showing up on the meter here. I'm trying to stand up so you can see it. It's a bit how you doing, as it were. Right, so turn this on. There we go, we definitely have some in there. And the black lead we want. No signs of leakage. So I'm going to run all the way down the black lead and check that there's no leakage showing up at all anywhere at 1000 volts. Nothing at all. So, installation resistance test looks pretty good. Yeah, so these leads are very nice. I mean, I'm, they're perfect for what I do. You know, I'm doing this fine electronics, but I mean, sometimes I'm doing a bit more bulky mains kind of stuff, you know, when I'm working on power supplies, stuff like that. But you can still use these for that. You know, it's 1000 volt rated, so you can use them. Put the long tips on. I mean, what I'd be tempted to do myself is actually put some heat shrink on these and sleeve them so that then they are an equivalent of what these are. You know, these sleeved connections. So these are sleeved here. So the only bit exposed is the very tip. So I'd be inclined to do something like that with these. So you can plug them in and just have the very tip, you know, that's sleeved down, just the tip exposed. Obviously you have a bit over here which is exposed. That's, you know, unavoidable I think. It's something to bear in mind. I think it actually says if you're using these tips it's rated for 30 volts max, obviously for safety reasons. Whereas these other ones, because it's much less exposed, these are higher voltage rating. So that's something you have to consider as well. These are very nice probes, I'm very happy with these. So thank you much for the promoter for sending these to me. And we'll have a look at the second set in a second. Again, comment down below if you use these pogo pin type tips on your stuff. Before you put these things away, always put the covers on. Again, because these are super sharp, and you want to keep them sharp, and you also don't want to stab yourself. So this is the tip set which comes with these probes. So it's called the 6354. So it's the models that these are compatible with. And it's a warning there about 30 volts AC or 60 volts DC if you're using the long tips. Because, you know, in case you zap yourself on something high voltage. You can expect to see me using these a lot in future videos because these are brilliant for what I do. These are great because you need to get into these small circuitry sections, you know, and SMD parts and what have you. Or even just having a really fine tip, so if you do slip, you're unsure between two pins. You know, these are great for that. Risks are greatly reduced by having a really fine tip. So, excellent. Very happy with them. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. Let's have a look at this other set here. The Deluxe Electronic Demon Test Lead Kit. Now what is, I actually asked for some of those long probes like, like these ones, because mine are getting a bit old now and, you know, I'd sort of like to have another set, I'd like to have spares as well, so if I do lose one I've got some more. So actually this is what I asked for, and um, Pomona said, actually we'll do better than that. We'll send you this. And this includes those probes in it, amongst other things. So this is the 5674C kit, and modular test probes with a 0.08 inch diameter tip. So it's what's that, about 2mm isn't it? I guess so. Flexible test leads, straight and a right angle with DMM plugs, maxi grabber test clips, me grab a leads, mini pincer lead, which is like the ones like this, instead of a hook, um, medium alligator clips, slide on extender tips, which is what I've been showing you, slide on IC tips, and a nylon pouch to sort them all in. Let's get into it. So let's open this up. I haven't opened this up yet. In fact, there's a staple on it. That proves I haven't opened it up yet. Come on, let me in. Oh, denied. Oh, come on. <laughs> there we go. Hey, there's two staples in there. My special two staples. Hey, look at that. Now, there's a pouch. Look at that, Pomona. Have a little bit of paper. Probably safety information. 
do not use Cat 3 or Cat 4 environments without the protective cap installed because that's you know what the cap does. So, category 2 directly connected to low voltage installation, Cat 3 building installation, and Cat 4 is um, electricity meter stuff like that. Other data and stuff, they got. look at all these things, they do lots of toys you could buy. <laughs> so, let's have a look. Let's pull the cables and stuff out first. Actually, let's just tip it out and then we'll go through it. Maxi grabber, we've got the size of this beast. We've got the size of those. So those are really good for doing like mains cable kind of stuff or beefy connections. These are super strong, that'd be really solid connection on that. Observations on these, 1000 volt cat 2, 10 amps max. So yeah, <laughs> you can do some work with these. Wow, um, you know, scrubber, something like that. Yeah, no problem at all around that. Do some quite big connections on that. Then we've got some probe tips, not super sharp, they're moderate, you know, I'm pushing on that slightly and it's hurting a little bit. Also got these caps that go over them, like this. These are the same caps that came with the lead set for that Fluke 107 multimeter actually. Same caps, but yeah, obviously that's for extra protection when you're doing high voltage stuff. It's a requirement. Well you also got these little covers to keep them so you don't stab yourself. And obviously these go on the end of a lead. So here is the cable. So these are nice silicon leads, really flexible, really nice. And these are 1.3 meters long, I just measured them. They are 1000 volt Cat3 rated. And the idea is you can get them on and you can plug them into your probes or whatever you want to adapt them up to. And obviously the other end will plug into your multimeter. It's got a bit of strain really funny, but this is quite hard plastic on these. Is a, I don't know what plastic that is, but it's um, pretty tough. So there's a bit of strain relief on there though. Okay, that's that one. We've got this set here. So these are some mini grabbers. Same deal. Let's plug them in. And these are fairly strong too. Can I go around that? No, can't go around that. Can go around these, I expect. Yep, so I'll hold on to these kind of probe sizes. That's about two millimeters or something. Maybe a bit bigger, probably three mil they can go around. Have a look over here actually, let's get one of these. Let's apparently get one of these. Is it, is it good component legs or not? Is it a bit big for those? It might be a bit big for those. Yeah, it doesn't quite get onto those. I'm not serial component legs, something else. Something a bit bigger than that. They're a bit too thin for those. So then we've got these ones which are a hook instead. Can I get this around the component leg? Maybe not on this board, I don't know. Yes I can, there we go. So we'll go around the component leg on this and hook on. Uh, depending on your service, these are quite large clips for doing Component work like this, I mean, it's probably more suited to electrical or maybe some larger sort of work because this is pretty fine stuff. But if you're trying to go around a wire or something like that, it's pretty easy. You know, if you're trying to, so there's a wire there, hook onto a wire, easy. Then we've got some crocodile clips. Now, these actually have it's a rubber, really nice soft rubber actually. I think that's actually a four millimeter banana. Yes, it is. So that's meant for banana jacks to go on there because I've got some of these like this one here which is obviously meant for going on the other probe instead, which are handy. Obviously this set's based on using a lead for it instead. 4 millimeter jack. Insulated as well. Set the crocodile clip for safety. Then we've got some new ones of these, which is what I actually asked for. <laughs> so we've got these sleeves. That's actually fully down right now. It's actually not even trimmed back. It's completely covered. So we trim it back to how far I want it, I suppose. This one here. There we go, there's a tip exposed just there. And obviously these go on the end of a probe, so if you get one of these, go on to this one. They go in there, hook onto there. The probe tip. That's expected. So this one here looks like they haven't trimmed it back. The sleeve is a bit long. Not a big deal. And there you go, trim back. Just tiny little bit exposed, that's all we need. Just the very tip. Just the tip. And only for a minute, as the saying goes. And then we have these ones which are meant for going on IC legs. So it's got like, you can just see the pin sticking out there, little probe, and it's got these little pocket it sits in. So the idea of that is that if you've got an IC, you can probe it without slipping off. Let's try to find an example. There you go. Here's some RAM chips. So here's the probe, and the idea is that you can get onto a leg like this and probe that leg. And you're not worrying about slipping off because it's going to be absolutely fine. I'll just run against the leg. I'm just flipping around with my finger lock. And that won't slip off and 
short it against anything else, which is always a risk when you're probing ICs. And now you've got the nice little bag to put them in. Storage pouch. Look at that. So you got Velcro compartments. But that one's Velcro, this not. That's just pockets. Pocket and a pocket. So you can see what's actually in each one. So you probably put like the loose adapters and stuff in the top one here so they don't fall out and you can put the actual leads and stuff like that in these other ones. Because they might fall out and you just roll it up. Let's do it. There you go, that's all in the bag. Roll those up. And try and get the bag shut. Oh, not fail. I probably haven't got these in there right. It's probably a certain way of stacking them in. Hmm, failed. And also don't forget to check the links down below to go to Pomona to check out their offerings on their website. The website is right here. Mm. PomonaElectronics.com Go and check them out. And check the links out down below. Okay, repack the pouch part. Let's try it out. There we go, now it shuts. Now we're learning how to stack it. Okay, but most things are really bad at doing packing. Repacking things into things? Oh, no, no good. Never tidy, and it's never it's quite the same. But anyway, there's a pouch. All the gears back in there. So again, thank you very much, Pomona, for sending these to me at no cost. Very much appreciated, and I'm sure they're going to get a better use. Especially these things. These are brilliant. Looking forward to using them a lot more. So don't forget to click like and subscribe for like reviews. And also, if you want to watch my Ultimate Review videos or my other reviews in general, then you can check out the playlist. I've got heaps of playlists on my channel. They may not be linked at the end of this video or in the description down below there may be something there maybe not but if you go to my main home page there's a whole bunch of playlists listed in there and you better find all the things done dozens and dozens of playlists all different kinds of things obviously electronic repairs um, product reviews like this or projects to work on or all sorts of stuff check them out so we've got a playlist here for something there's a playlist there for something there's a subscribe link right there and there's a patreon support link right there so if you want to help support the channel and that's always very helpful. Catch you later. Bye.